in second order differential equations there is a certain situation where we have a variable term on the right hand side when this happens we have a certain case that requires a certain way of solution let us see how we can solve this situation this is the standard form that we have been studying before where there is co constant coefficients on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have constant term however if it doesn't happen and we have a variable in terms of t here then it means that we have a new case where we cannot use the same formula that we have been using before it is a case that we can say is a constant coefficient variable term differential equation because the con uh, coefficients they are still constant in nature however the term be has become variable in nature this remains what it was before so the left hand side is the same as it was before and you know left hand side helps us to find out the complementary function so if the left hand side is the same the complementary function will also be calculated using the same method and when we find out the complementary function we depend on this characteristic equation and in this characteristic equation the right hand side is zero so uh, the uh, variable term on the right hand side doesn't affect the uh, yc that is the complementary function so after making sure that yc remains the same let's talk about yp it changes here because we have uh, a different term instead of b now we have a function in terms of t variable and uh, t can have a power other than zero this is something that will happen n will not be equal to 0 because if it is equal to 0 then t raised to the power 0 will become 1 and the variable will disappear so therefore we suggest that it's um, suitable to say that um, we have a power of t which is not equal to 0 after understanding its basic form we talk about the method of solution there is a certain title for its solution and it is known as the method of undetermined coefficients in this uh, method we will assume a trial solution and then we will uh, see if it gets solved and in the process we are able to determine the coefficients that will help us to develop the solution uh, this will get clear as we come to some sort of numerical example however before we uh, practically start the solution we have to be sure of a precondition that should hold in order to be um, in order for us to be able to solve this by using the method of undetermined coefficients and it requires that the method of this you know that is undetermined coefficients it requires that the variable term and its successive derivatives together contain only a finite and distinct types of expressions so the variable term that we are assuming here if we take its uh, derivatives uh, they will have finite and distinct types of expressions now what are uh, finite and distinct types let us see with the help of this example uh, we will consider a function which is y t and we can take its derivatives second derivative third and fourth and so on and uh, when we assume a certain value for example if we assume that this is that function its derivative would be this and then further derivative and then further derivatives if we consider that this is the function then its derivative and further subsequent derivatives if we consider sine t as the function its derivative and then the further derivatives the difference between these two uh, uh, functions and their derivatives and this set is that the term is reducing and it is finite because it ends here there are no further derivatives to take and they are distinct because you can see that these values they are quite different from each other here it was quadratic then it became linear now it became constant and further remains constant and there is uh, no further improvement or change in the derivative it remains zero however if we look at this couple of uh, uh, sets in these sets of the derivatives and the original function we have a function that remains there that is the exponential function it is the same that is exponent of minus 40 
here again the t variable remains the same and there is repetition that is sine comes again and then cause comes again and so on repetition is also here in terms of the exponent and you know the the term is increasing here it was the magnitude that is 2 becomes 8 in absolute sense and then 32 and then 128 so this couple of uh, set of um, derivatives of the uh, function and the subsequent derivatives they are infinite because they will continue as you can see these three dots show that it's a continuous process and they're repetitive because you can see the repetition happening again and again here however it was finite it ended here there is no so on here and they are distinct every new derivative is different from the previous one substantially different so we have to take one that is finite and distinct type of expression so here in this numerical example we are using the same uh, function as the variable term because this is solvable otherwise uh, this method will not be able to help us and we are required to find the particular integral because we know the complementary function can be found without uh, getting uh, affected by the variable term on the right hand side because that will be dependent upon a1 and a2 so a1 and a2 are 5 and 3 as we can see here and then this is the term on the right hand side we call this as the particular integral and it is calculated differently due to change in left hand side as you can see the left hand side is now variable term and um, left hand side it is written as it is but we have uh, you know put the boxes on the uh, terms that we have the original function and then the derivative and then the second order derivative other terms are there as they are and you can see that the function its first derivative second derivatives you know all of those alternative uh, derivatives are given and they are all in terms of variable t and on the right hand side we have this algebraic expression quadratic function in terms of t and if there is a sign in uh, uh, of equal in the middle it means that they are equal now th there is no doubt that they are equal this is something that we see in our um, usual mathematics but we are emphasizing here because we want to compare and extract some coefficients that is why it is known as the method of uh, com uh, undetermined coefficients so using the virtue of the equality we will extract the coefficients uh, let's see that how we can do this in this case so since you can see I have uh, highlighted that in both are in terms of t so it means that we can extract their um, coefficients by comparison however on the left hand side the problem is that we don't have the actual values of the function and its subsequent derivatives we have yt we have um, y bar t and then we have y double bar t but we don't have their values we, we don't have their specific values the degree of the polynomial on the left hand side is not explicit we don't know about if it is quadratic uh, or linear or cubic or any other degree but the equality requires that the right hand side in the quad uh, is in quadratic terms so the left hand side should also be in quadratic terms be because this uh, right hand side is in quadratic terms this requires that the left hand side should also be quadratic in nature so this allows us to come up with a uh, assumption and the assumption is of the trial uh, solution and that is quadratic in nature because the right hand side is also quadratic in nature so let us assume a uh, trial solution which is quadratic in nature and here we are starting with t square t and then t part 0 which is not visible and uh, b1 b2 and b3 are the various uh, co uh, coefficients that we are assuming because this is the uh, value of yt the derivative of which we can calculate here we have calculated its derivative and then the further derivative the second order derivative so we are noting the same equation again here for the sake of understanding 
we have assumed that th it is equal to this equation um, but we haven't found the first derivative but here it is actually found and this is the second order derivative so I can put these values in in this uh, equation that is y bar double bar t and then y bar t and then y t so let's put these values in it this is y bar double bar t this is y bar t and this is y t now uh, we can solve this uh, using simple algebra the arrangement is such that the t square term is appearing first and then t term and then without t terms because the right hand side is in this uh, descending order of the degree and we know that we want to compare and come up with the undetermined coefficients so now we are in that position where we can compare because we have t square so its coefficient should be equal on both sides we have t so its coefficient should be equal on both sides and without constant variables they should be equal so this is the uh, coefficient of t square on this side and this is on the other side this is the coefficient of t on left hand side this is the coefficient on the right hand side of t and this is the term without t on the left hand side on the right hand side we have this now uh, we can equate them so we will see that 3b1 will be equal to uh, 6 and so on so 3b1 is equal to 6 and this is the and this underlying term is the coefficient of t on both sides and this term which is without any term uh, without any t term it is the constant term on both sides the comparison of those let us go back and see this term would be 10b1 10b1 as you can see here is the coefficient of t along with 3b2 and it is equal to minus 1 and this term is also equal to minus 1 as you can see the constant term so on the right hand side of both of these we have minus 1 as we saw in the comparison now we can uh, come up with b1 and b2 that is here we can extract the value of b1 so we are noting it till the end however the other equation is here we put the value of b1 here becomes 20 and then 3 b2 and then b2 is evaluated and then we have the this term which we are solving here here we have substituted the value of b1 and we have substituted the value of b2 and then we can simplify it to find the value of b3 so now we have the value of b1 and b2 and b3 these three values are found and this was the assumption the uh, trial solution that we assumed and uh, when we put the values of b1 and b2 and b3 we get this term and on the left hand side now we know that we have used certain um, assumption of the trial solution so now it is not just uh, uh, any point in in the time path it is the particular solution that is the equilibrium value so val values of b1 and b2 and b3 are substituted and we get this term this actually is the particular integral of the given uh, second order differential equation with variable term on the right hand side and constant coefficients on the left hand side and this is the solution of it that we have found by using the method of undetermined coefficients and we remember that yc can be found by using the same process of constant coefficient and constant term method of the second order differential equation because right hand side doesn't matter in the calculation of yc so this is how we can solve a second order differential equation which has a variable term on the right hand side and has constant coefficients on the left hand side this was a, a slightly different case that we have dealt with and this was the uh, main topic that we discussed. Thank you.